translating a verbal expression into a mathematical expression. So if we look at each one of these expressions, it says the sum of a number and seven. So sum means addition. A number, we don't know what that is, so we'll call it X. So this would be X plus seven. So we've translated these words into a mathematical expression. So what would six more than a number be? Six plus X. Six plus X. Could also write it X plus six. It doesn't matter with addition, which order it's in. So three plus a number would be three plus X or X plus three. 24 added to a number. So X plus 24. A number increased by five. The X plus five. And then the sum of two numbers where we don't know the value of either one, we're just gonna add two variables together. We can do X plus Y. Okay, pretty straightforward on those. Just notice the different, all the different ways that words could mean addition. Got more than, plus, added to, increased, sum, all those. Okay, two less than a number. This needs to be X minus two. You could not write it as two minus X. Two less than a number means you're starting with the number and you're subtracting two. Two minus X would not be the same thing. 12 minus a number, so 12 minus X. A number decreased by 12. So starting with X, subtract 12. A number subtracted from 10. So starting with 10, subtract X. From a number, subtract 10. So starting with X minus 10. And then the difference between two numbers, we don't know the value of either one, so we'll write X minus Y. Okay, next one, 16 times a number. That would be 16 times X, which we write as 16 X. A number multiplied by six. So that's X times six, which again, we would write that as just six X. Two thirds of a number. That's gonna be two thirds X of always means multiplication. So two thirds of a number, two thirds times X, which we would write as two thirds X. Three fourths as much as a number, same idea here, three fourths X. Twice as much as a number would be two X. And the product of two numbers, product means multiplication. We don't know the value of either number, so it's just X, Y. Okay, the quotient of eight and a number, quotient means division. And whatever number is listed first is what's gonna go first in our quotient. So eight over X. It's the quotient of eight and a number. Next one, a number divided by 13. So starting with X, divide by 13. And the last one is the ratio of two numbers. Ratio is gonna mean division as well. X over Y, because we don't know the value of either one of the numbers.
Okay, because subtraction and division are not commutative, big word, they're not commutative operations, it is important to correctly translate expressions involving them. All that means is with subtraction and division, order matters. With addition and multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. You could do like the first one we wrote was X plus seven. You could write it as seven plus X and it wouldn't change the value. But with subtraction and division, that is not the case. You have to read this very carefully to know which order it goes in. Questions on this page? All right, let's look at the back. All of this is leading us up to working some word problems, which we'll get to later today. Okay, so now we're moving up to a full sentence that's gonna be translated into an equation. So twice a number decreased by three is 42. Twice a number would be two X decreased by three, so minus three is 42. Is always means equals, so we've got equals 42. Next one, the product of a number in 12 decreased by seven is 105. So the product of a number in 12, product means multiplication, so that would be 12x decreased by seven. So minus seven is 105. So equals 105. Okay, the quotient of a number and the number plus four is 28. So quotient is gonna mean division. A number is what's listed first, so x and the number plus four, so x plus four. The number, it's referencing the same number that we used earlier, it's not a different variable, it's still x is 28, so that equals 28. And the next one, the quotient of a number and four comma plus the number is 10. So on this one, we've got another quotient of a number and four. The comma ends that quotient. There's nothing else that going in that. Then we're adding the number, so X, outside of the fraction. Whereas in the one right above it, the quotient of a number and the number plus four, there's no comma. So the number plus four, all of that goes in the denominator of our quotient. In this one, there was a comma. So the only thing that's going in the denominator is four. And then we're done with that quotient. On the outside, we have plus X. And then is 10, so equals 10. Okay, the sum of a number and six is 28. So sum means addition, x plus six equals 28. The product of a number and seven is twice the number plus 12. So product means multiplication of a number and seven, so seven x is, so equals, twice the number, so 2x plus 12. And the last one, the quotient of a number and six, so x over six added to twice the number, so plus 2x is seven, so equals seven.
Okay. So on the front page, we did expressions. And then on this page, we just did equations. What is the only difference between an expression and an equation? You can compare these two right here. There's an equal sign. In equations, there's an equal sign. So that means this is an equation. This is only an expression. In, when we have an equation, we can solve for the variable in that equation. We could solve for X in this equation. In the expression, we could simplify it a little bit, but we could not get a value for X because there's no equal sign. Okay. So before we move on to the word problems, we have some steps that we're gonna to need to take when we solve the word problem. So let's get those down first. So solving an applied problem. The first step, obviously read the problem. Read the problem several times if necessary until you understand what is given and what is to be found. Step two, assign a variable. Assign a variable to represent the unknown value using diagrams or tables as needed. Write down what the variable represents. If necessary, express any other unknown values in terms of the variable. Step three is to write an equation using the variable expressions. Step four, solve the equation. And then step five, check. Check that the answer makes sense by reading the original problem. So if you end up with a negative answer and you look back and you read the problem and you're supposed to be finding like miles per hour and your answer is negative, that doesn't make sense. So you've done something wrong. You need to go back and figure that out. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna look at some word problems. Number one, it says the length of a rectangle is one centimeter more than twice the width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 110 centimeters. Find the length and width of the rectangle. So let's assign some variables. Length we'll call L. Width. W, pretty easy. The first sentence says the length is one centimeter more than twice the width. So L equals one centimeter more than twice the width. So one plus two W. One centimeter more than twice the width. We're told the perimeter of the rectangle is 110 centimeters. So to get 110 centimeters, we would have to have two times the width plus two times the length. If you think about a rectangle, The perimeter is the measure of all four sides added together. Well, we have two that are the same length being L and two that are the width of, or the length of W. 
So we've got 2W plus 2L to make up the perimeter of the rectangle, which it tells us the perimeter equals 110. So this is our equation that we're going to use. Now, we want this equation to only have one variable. Right now it has two, it has a W and an L, but L is also equal to one plus two W. So we can replace L in this equation with one plus two W. So let's do that. Everything else has stayed the same, but instead of L, we're plugging in one plus two W. So now we have an equation that only has one variable, which means we should be able to solve for that variable. So let's get rid of these parentheses by distributing the two. So two times one is two. 2 times 2w two is 4w. We can combine like terms. 2w plus 4w equals 6w. And then we just want to get the W by itself. So let's get rid of this plus two by subtracting two from both sides. So we get 108 equals six W. Get the W by itself by dividing both sides by six. 108 divided by six. You can do that in your calculator. You'll get 18. So we get W equals 18, but we're asked to find the length and width. Right now, all we found was the width. So we can find the length because we know the length equals one plus two W. And now we know what W is, so we can plug in 18 for W. Two times 18 is 36. And one plus 36 equals 37. So if you are given a problem in sentences like this, then you want to write your answer in a sentence as well. So we'll say the length is 37 inches, nope, centimeters. And the width is 18 centimeters. There's our answer. Questions on this one? Okay, number two. Two outstanding major league pitchers in recent years are Randy Johnson and Johan Santana. In 2004, so obviously not that recent, the two pitchers had a combined total of 555 strikeouts. Johnson had 25 more strikeouts than Santana. How many strikeouts did each, each pitcher have? Okay, so let's write down some things that we know. So we'll call the number of strikeouts that Santana had S. Oh, 
and Johnson strikeouts. We'll call Jay. Okay, it says the two pitchers had a combined total of 555 strikeouts. So if we do S plus J, that should equal 555. So right now our equation has two variables, so we can't really solve for either one of them. Let's look at this next sentence. It says Johnson had 25 more strikeouts than Santana. So Johnson, J, if we take the number of strikeouts that Santana had, which we've called S and add 25, that will give us the number of strikeouts that Johnson had. So J is also equal to S plus 25. So we can write this J in this equation as S plus 25. So we've got S plus, and then instead of J, we're plugging in S plus 25 equals 555. Now our equation only has one variable, so we should be able to solve for S. Combine like terms, so we've got 2S plus 25. Subtract 25 from both sides. So we've got 2S equals 530. Divide both sides by two, and S equals 265. So we know the number of strikeouts that Santana had. Now we can find the number of strikeouts that Johnson had because we know J equals S plus 25. And we now know that S equals 265. So 265 plus 25, which means J equals 290. Okay, so we have our answer. Let's write it in sentence form. Santana had 265 strikeouts. Johnson had 290 strikeouts. Any questions on this one? Okay, let's look at number three. In 2002, there were 301 long distance area codes in the United States, an increase of 250% over the number when the area code plan originated in 1947. How many area codes were there in 1947? So what we're trying to find, number of codes in 1947. That's what we want to know. So let's assign a variable about in number of codes in seems like a good variable to use. 
Okay, also talks about the number of codes in 2002. And it gives us that value. It says there was 301. So between 1947 and 2002, it says there was an increase of 250%. So let's look at the math that's going on there. So the increase that they're talking about is 250% over the number when the area code plan originated. So that number is in because we don't know that. And it's an increase of 250%. So of always means multiplication. So we're taking the number of codes that there were, which is in, multiplying it by 250%. So let's write that as a decimal. It would be 2.5 times in. That's how we can write the increase that happened in math. Okay, so it says the increase of 250% over the number when the area code plan originated. So if you start with N, which is the number of codes that there were, we're gonna add how much it increased by, and that will give us the number of codes in 2002. So start with a number, a certain number of codes, increase it by 250% and you'll end up with 301, which is the number of codes in 2002. So this is our equation. It only has one variable, so we should be able to solve for n. n plus 2.5n, it's like adding one plus 2.5, so it's 3.5n equals 301. So now to get in by itself, divide both sides by 3.5. 3.01 divided by 3.5 is 86. So that tells us there were 86 area codes in 1947.